So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama, with its vicious racist, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification. One day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be made low the rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together this is our hope this is the faith that I go back to the south with with this faith we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope with this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day, this will be the day with all of God's children be able to sing with new meaning, my country tears of thee. Sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. And so let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom ring. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, and when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, 
free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. I must confess that uh, that dream that I had that day has at many points turned into a nightmare. Now the other thing that we've got to come to see now that many of us didn't see too well during the last 10 years, and that is that racism Not guilty. is still alive in American society and much more widespread. A handful of protests, a handful of uh, criminals uh, and thugs who... Many in moments of anger, Many in moments of deep bitterness engage in riots. And as long as America postpones justice, we stand in the position of having these recurrences of violence and riots over and over again. Social justice and progress are the absolute guarantors of riot prevention. Mr. Gray's death was a homicide. The Negro was freed from the bondage of physical slavery. The athletes marched onto a stage. But at the same time, the nation refused to give him land to make that freedom meaningful. Freedom without land to cultivate. Freedom and famine at the same time. And create jobs for our people. And create jobs for our people. Negro is to be free. He must move down into the inner resources of his own soul and sign with a pen and ink of self-asserted manhood his own emancipation proclamation. But I want to get the language right tonight. I want to get the language so right that everybody here will cry out, Yes, I'm black, I'm proud of it, I'm black and beautiful. Talking about Martin Luther King, they noticed one day he was depressed. He wasn't right. And here's the story he tells. And when we asked him what was the matter, Martin said, you know, I've been thinking long and hard about our struggle. We worked tenaciously for our rights. And uh, the culmination of all that effort will be reflected in what we've come to call the integration movement. And I sit here deeply concerned that I suspect we're leading our nation on an integration trip that has us integrating into a burning house. I don't think we quite understood how pathetic that remark was. After all, we're in the midst of a very heady moment. 